I'm making a new attachment for the box blade. I bought a bunch of these rippers. Uh, those the or the scarifier teeth that are used in a box blade, and I want to. Uh, we're having a lot of problems with a weeds in the driveway, and I want to put a do. It's it's a cutting edge on the a bottom of the box blade uh, welded to these rippers. So what I need to do. These things are super thick. Uh, they are. These are five eighths. Uh, just about five eighths of an inch thick and uh, I need to put a bevel on these things so the weld uh, will get plenty of penetration and I figured we would uh, try out the Bauer a cordless angle grinder uh, if you guys buy one of these don't buy anything but the 3.0 batteries that they sell the smaller ones are just not as good so uh, I, you need a lot of power. This is a brushed angle grinder. So I guess uh, let's get started. See how long this thing lasts. And uh, these do have a battery gauge on them. You know, see how full they are. And this one is fully charged. I have a uh, four inch disc on here and I'm just using up some of my old discs that I have laying around here. I've got to say this new cordless angle grinder from Harbor Freight, this Bauer, this thing is quickly becoming my go-to angle grinder for using a flap wheel, grinding, and using a wire wheel. Uh, this angle grinder does not do that great with cutting thick steel. You really need a corded one. But for pretty much everything else, I would much rather use this cordless angle grinder over a corded one. It's just so much more convenient. I made a new attachment for the box scraper here. I added this. This is actually a cutting edge for a bucket. It is five feet long from there all the way over to here. And I have welded the, I bought a brand new set of rippers for this thing. Uh, just these five pieces, these five verticals going down. And this piece here were about $200 if I remember correctly something like that and then I bought uh, 25 pounds of stick electrodes also So anyways after using this as you can see uh, we've got a little bit of a problem here I uh, see how this edge sticks out past the box blade uh, what this is doing is uh, cutting into the driveway we're using this primarily for gravel work and uh, it is throwing stones outside of the box blade and making the driveway I don't know two inches wider with every pass so I really do not want that to happen my welds in here I'm a I tried stick welding this I didn't get any video of it I was uh, getting late for one thing and I just wanted to get done and it was getting dark and so I just didn't uh, didn't do any filming but every time I stick weld I am reminded how bad I am at it and uh, these welds that are holding this on this uh, cutting edge here to those rippers uh, they they're about a 5 to a 10 foot weld which means they look good from about 5 to 10 feet away and uh, it's just uh, <laughs> just the way things are I guess but uh, fortunately for the sides of the box blade I can weld this with my flux core welder with just my little wire feed up there from Harbor Freight and that'll weld it just fine. But what I want to do is extend this out to a little bit beyond this cutting edge here. And that'll hopefully keep all of the uh, gravel and stuff contained in here. Or it'll, um, it'll be right in line, you know, just on the inside here. It won't make the driveway wider. So I've got the piece laid out here. And I actually just made a cardboard template. This actually works really, really well. But I made this to fit this thing over here. And if you look, get this in place, it pretty much fits exact. Uh, I've also made the same profiles and everything, except I'm going to square this corner off more so we have more metal down there to wear away. Let's talk a little bit about the steel I'm using here. This is 
a diamond plate steel. There's no chrome plating or anything on it. I don't know if it was cold rolled or hot rolled. It was probably hot rolled steel. And it has the diamonds on the one side and then just a flat sheet of steel on the other. So what I want to do is put the flat side out and the diamond side in so that you won't see the diamonds because the rest of this uh, box scraper is not diamond plate. It's just regular steel on both sides. So I tried using the bower there to uh, cut uh, the steel and that was 3 sixteenths, maybe a little bit more than 3 sixteenths of an inch thick steel. And it kind of did it. It was really working, and it it has that overload protection, which I actually I kind of like because uh, the old grinders would kick real bad, and this one just kind of shuts off on you, which is I think it's kind of a nice thing. Some people would probably find it annoying, but it for metal prep and stuff, you really cannot beat this cordless angle grinder. I absolutely love this thing. I'll probably I'm I might buy two or three more of these and a couple more batteries. That's how much I like this thing. But I'm using it to prep this steel, going around the edges, taking off the burr, and also uh, just cleaning up the steel in preparation for welding. So I've got both of the sides of the box scraper fixed with, uh, they're all clean, and I'm just using actually that other piece to help hold things together and keep things straight. I have learned uh, previously from welding, uh, it's really a good idea to tack both sides of the steel that you're welding together. So if you're doing a corner joint, you know, tack both sides. You're doing a lap joint, tack both sides. You're doing a butt joint like what I'm doing here, uh, tack both sides because as you weld on one side uh, more than the other, it will want to bend things, and uh, it's kind of bent. I don't want to say it's bent forever, but you can bend it back, but it definitely takes more time and effort to do that. So if I can get away with not having to do that, I'm going to do it. So I'm just doing a bunch of tacks on, tack welds on both sides of this to try to hold things t together so that they will not move on me. And this welder, uh, in case anyone doesn't know, this is the old version of the, uh, I guess it's the 120 amp welder that Harbor Freight sells now. This is, it, I think all the new one is, is just a rebranded 90 amp one like what I have. So another thing that I'd like to say is it's when you're welding thick steel with a welder like this, that's kind of underpowered for this. Uh, it helps to create a slight gap because it allows the weld to get into in between the two pieces of steel because you can't quite melt both of them. They're just uh, too thick for a welder like this. Even though it is rated for, I think it's rated for 3 16 steel, which is about what this is, and it just... Uh, it doesn't quite do it as well as it used to. It used to weld this steel uh, just fine, so I... Or maybe my memory is not correct. I'm not really sure. Even though I was taking my time, uh, welding this. These welds still, I thought, turned out kind of cold. Uh, they just didn't seem like they were as hot as they used to be and melt into the steel. So I'm not real sure what's up with this welder. Maybe it's time for a new one, but who knows? I'm probably going to just keep running this thing till I can't run it anymore. So now that you guys have made it 10 minutes into this video, I thought I'd show you something a little different. This is my neighbor's Harley Davidson a fat boy. This is the intermission. Well, 
I've got to say, that's a nice bike, isn't it? Let me know what you guys think of it down in the comments below. Anyways, I thought I would uh, also add a piece of steel on the side of the box scraper here. Since I added this piece on the front, there's not a whole lot that's really holding this. All that's holding it is pretty much uh, just the weld. There's no gussets. There's no uh, piece of steel on the outside. Like, uh, I think there should be just to add strength so it does not uh, bend this because I, I don't want to uh, break this thing and have to fix a bent steel. It uh, never really goes back the same as what it once was, so if I can prevent it from bending, then that's exactly what I'll do. So these are just some, I think, 2 inch by 1 inch uh, C-channel steel, and it's, I think, also 3 16 thick. So I'm just getting this all tacked up, and I've got it extended out over the new weld or the new piece that I added in, and I'm hoping that that will give me some strength. Uh, later in the video, you guys will see I end up, I put a, a gusset in this also to uh, strengthen the top in addition to this piece that is uh, strengthening the bottom. So I'm really, uh, I really underestimated how much welding it was going to take to uh, do all this to this box scraper. In just the rippers alone, there was over five feet of weld, I think, I put down. Something like that, about both sides and all the way around each ripper. That was like five feet. And then these two pieces here... Or this piece here on, I fully welded everything. That was probably another, about another five feet, and then another five feet on the left side. So there's, in just this project that I've done so far, there's at least 15 feet of weld. That doesn't include the gussets, which are probably another a foot or probably two feet each. Uh, again, fully welding on both sides. It's, uh, I really underestimated how much welding I had to do on this. But, you know, this is kind of one of those things that it's a, a do it one time, and you hopefully will probably never, ever have to go back to it again. Now, maybe, maybe I'll have an improvement at some point, but I think for the most part, this thing is, after this, I'm pretty much done with modifying it and that's pretty much it I, I other than paint the uh, painting this thing would be nice uh, there's not much paint left on it at least on the bottoms and bottom sides of it and uh, I know probably the next time I use it again all the paint will come right off but uh, it'd be nice to clean this thing up and try to make it look nice again uh, this in doing all of this between the rippers, that cutting edge, and the box scraper itself, we have over $500 in this one attachment for the farm tractor. So it's uh, not cheap doing all this. This thing's pretty much done. I'm very pleased with this. And uh, I guess the next thing to do is to unload this thing off the trailer here. I've been just working on it on the Jeep trailer. And... Let's put this thing on the farm tractor next and see what this thing will do to the weeds in the driveway. Got the aid in with the box scraper here. I, after using this for a while, so you can see pretty much where I've been, I've, all these weeds have been pretty much focused here, but uh, all in the gravel driveway here, if you look, they're all cut. All these weeds, they're all cut, all of them. So, I'm gonna let these weeds bake out in the sun here. There's, as you can see, they are everywhere. This is the absolute worst spot. This will probably take a few passes to do this because there's so many weeds.
I've got to say, in doing just this first pass, I am already very impressed. Uh, you can see this was pretty much just like a lawn in here. Uh, like I said, the grass has taken over. And after I was done with this, the plan is I went over this with the uh, the drag screen. I forget what um, some other people have called it on my channel. It's been in other videos, my other uh, box blading video. And I ended up uh, smoothing all this out and then I'm just letting some time go by for the weeds to uh, bake out on the gravel. They probably will not come back. There's really no way that they can root themselves back down through the driveway because I've all I've cut the roots and everything off and they are sitting on top of the gravel uh, literally just baking out in the sun so but you can see this thing is working quite well I know some people are thinking I'm scraping this down to the base of the driveway and that is kind of correct I, there's not a whole whole lot of gravel here to start with and that's probably why the weeds are coming up here because the uh, there's not that much gravel here and in the spots that there are more gravel there that, that there is more gravel uh, there's not that many weeds but in the edges uh, they will uh, try to grow in and what's nice is we don't have to use chemicals when I'm using this thing. All we're using is a farm tractor and uh, just uh, a box scraper. So this is really, in at least in my opinion, and probably a lot of other people will agree with me, this is probably one of the best ways to get rid of weeds in your gravel driveway without the use of harsh chemicals that'll leach into the ground and uh, pollute could pollute groundwater and stuff like that. Now, I know we're using a tractor, so we're kind of polluting the air and stuff, but I think I'd rather have air pollution than concentrated uh, water pollution in, on the ground. So, but I've got to say this is working pretty good. I'm very impressed. Uh, just a couple days later, uh, we've had a couple rains and stuff. Uh, it's washed off all the stones and this driveway looks really really good it was funny uh, a guy stopped uh, we had a an old culvert pipe we were getting rid of that was out by the road and he asked if he could take it and we said yeah sure and this was after I had done the entire driveway like this and he said oh my gosh you guys got a brand new driveway you guys must have spent a fortune on gravel for this driveway and then my dad told him no we didn't spend anything all we did was just use a an attachment on the farm tractor that I made and that's pretty much what we did I just have to go over the whole driveway with the leaf blower and blow off all the weeds and then you'll hardly even be able to tell that anything happened so I should probably tell you guys where I got this idea from uh, this was from, there's a, a company out there called ABI Attachments, and they have a sort of a similar attachment that goes on a tractor uh, like this, but uh, of course we have the box scraper, and uh, their attachment was uh, a few thousand dollars, I think, if I remember correctly. So here's a big cluster of weeds. Look, it uh, cut all those. They're all cut. Up this one. I'll have to go over. I only, I only went over this pass right here. I think uh, once or twice. Obviously, I can't get too close to the building here. But yeah, this uh, this thing works pretty good. I am pretty impressed with this thing so far. I kind of forgot about the mats over here. Whoops. Those were old. We didn't care about them. So I can push all this gravel here back over to fill this kind of back in again. But uh, that's pretty good. I'm. I'm pleased with it, other than it kicking the gravel out on the side. Here's that spot that I uh, did with the 
a box scraper and look at that pretty much weed free um, very very different from what it was so I am very pleased with the way that this looks so far look at that pretty nice two thumbs up